Dude, could you, if you wouldn't mind, because I do, I do think I've got a good amount of young comedians who listen, and I don't want them to think there's any one blueprint for any of this stuff. And and who knows if they're if you're a year into comedy, this was a bad year for you to choose to start stand up comedy, by the way. <laughs> but don't get down. And also, you're a long way away from a late night spot. And also, sadly, or who knows? I don't even know if late night spots are going to be a thing a decade from now. Um, it seems to be trending the other way. Every show seems to have less and less comics on. Right. Like when we were growing up, didn't it feel like there was a stand up on a few times a week? And then it got to a point where it was like once a week, maybe sometimes once every two weeks, there'd be a stand up on. Anyhow, but if you wouldn't mind taking me through the process of getting David Letterman and what that must have felt like, because that's like the comedian's equivalent of like, hey, mom and dad, I'm getting drafted in the first round. Yeah, it was cool. That was like the the one show that I really wanted to do. And I, I felt like I was kind of close when I was um, showcasing there for Eddie Brill. He would come through and do like the showcase there. And then Eddie was no He's longer booker, booking right? the comics anymore. And it was kind of like, oh, wow, that's, and I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like trying to build it with him. So then it was like, I didn't even know who the bookers were. And I was working in um, Columbus at the Funny Bone with Nick Griffin. And Nick was like, hey, I know the bookers. He was like Letterman's favorite comic. Nick Griffin was on Letterman, I think, like 15 times. Wow. And um, he recommended me. And it, after that, it started to like really seem like it was going to happen. It, but it took like you know seven, eight months. Got an email, um, and it was like a month ahead of time, and it was cool. You know, I submitted the tape. They kind of helped build the set a little bit. You know, we kind of go back and forth a little bit. The experience was awesome. I didn't really like hang out with David Letterman. We just he I only met him on the set as we taped it the first time i saw him was when i walked out there i mean i was nervous like you wouldn't believe kevin bacon was a guest um dude so you're one degree of separation from kevin bacon yeah right <laughs> that's pretty great yeah he was a guest i'm trying to think who the other who the other guest was and then um shaky graves was the, the musical guest and um just being in that theater you know it's it's kind of cool that it's a theater and not a TV studio, you know, in the sense that like it is good for stand up. It's a great atmosphere, you know. Um, but the guy like kind of sensed that I was nervous. I just always remember he was like, like I'll tap your shoulder when when it's time to go out. And he's like, uh, he's like, just remember this is where the Beatles made their debut and Elvis and like he. It was like cool to hear that though, you know. Yeah. Um, He's trying to relax me by making me more nervous. Um, but it was fun. It was funny. cool. Good experience. It was, uh, I have the cue cards. They gave you, gave me the cue cards uh, that he read off of when he introduced me. I still have those. That's like probably one of my, you know, bigger mementos from stand up. You get them framed? I do have them framed, yeah. Uh, Sarah got them framed for me for Christmas a couple years ago. Nice. It's kind of a cheap gift, though, you know? <laughs> Yeah, right. It's like yeah. this is this is a gift from you. I got it for free for an accomplishment, <laughs> and you went to Michael's. Ooh, okay. <laughs> right. That's exactly where she got it done. No, that's crazy. So when you said they helped you with the set, does that mean they were like, ah, lose that line, or we're not sure about this joke for our sponsors? Was it stuff like that? Yeah, I remember. Um, I'm trying to think, there like yeah, there was like a phrasing of a word. Or, they didn't or want or you to say as much as you do. Yeah, <laughs> we know. Man. I did. Um, there, I, I did have a joke about um, my daughter being in a crib, and I called it like a sunroof prison or something. And um, they didn't like that. It was right after. Do you remember when like those terrorists lit that person on fire? Was it Al Qaeda or probably <laughs> they lit him on fire? And it was like they put it on the internet. It was like. I kind of remember about that. It. Yeah, because when was when did you do it? Like 2014? Um, 2013? Yeah, I did it. I actually did it twice. I did it in 2014 and 2015. Whatever the last year was. I think it was 2014 and 2015. That's right. And both times you only talked to Dave when you were doing uh, like on stage? Both times. The second time he, he lingered a little bit longer after the, uh, the wrap-up, but no interaction before the show 
um, just saw him on the set. I, the one time, the, the uh, one time I was there, I was getting in the elevator, and I someone was running up the stairs, and the stairs go like along the side. It's an old building along the side of the elevator, and I thought this person was running to catch the elevator, and I was like, "Oh, hey!" And I'm holding it, and it was him. It was Letterman, and he was in between shows, so they taped two on Thursdays, and I was going in for the second taping. And they said that in between shows, he ran those stairs. He ran them every day after he had his uh, heart issue. And he oh, would, okay. He was hauling ass up those stairs, man. It was like his workout. That's crazy. Like Celebrities will do workouts in the weirdest way. Um, Hannibal <laughs> Burris, I was hanging out with him once after a show, just after he did the movie Neighbors. And you know he plays like a cop in that. Oh, yeah, and yeah. He told me. In between takes, whenever they were like, all right, cut. And then, you know, the reset and lights and film, Zach Efron's assistant would come over to him with a couple like dumbbells, like maybe like 25 pounds or something like that. And Zach Efron would do curls in between every take. And then sometimes like in between takes, he would drop down and do push ups, or he would like, he was just, you know, and then Hannibal's like, come to think of it, it's a pretty good time to do something. Cause you're just standing around, but it was nuts. He'd be like cut. And then immediately he'd be like, yeah. yeah, and then the guy would come over and he'd start just pumping. Don't you think you get like sweaty? I don't know if it was just maybe it was just tone. Maybe just keep a tone. Maybe you would get a little. Did he sweaty. have his shirt off? He probably had his shirt off in the scene. Yeah, keep it tight. Maybe keep looking buff. Keep looking. Yeah, I should have followed up with Hannibal, but now that I think about it, if I would have followed up with Hannibal going, was his shirt off? He might have made fun of me for he that. Wants to get the veins out, probably. You know, I just I saw was Hannibal in a uh, that movie with uh, Will Ferrell and um. Oh, Mark Wahlberg? Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> He's good in that. It's very good, man. 